Hello, everybody. This is Tom Eckert here. You're listening to my podcast, Numerology, a GPS for the soul. This is your place to learn about the true power of numerology and how to use it to bring out the best in yourself, understand your loved ones better, take wise decisions, and prepare for your future. In other words, how to live your life aligned with your true destiny. Take your time to educate yourself and share these podcasts with your friends and family so they too can enjoy the great benefits of numerology. Enjoy! Hello there and welcome to all my beloved listeners. I'm excited, as always, to share with you a new episode. Today we're going to dive in <clears throat> to the topic of the different degrees of impact of our five core numbers. Before I say anything further about that, if you're new here, I welcome you to my podcast. In this particular podcast, we discuss numerology as a path for inner transformation, spiritual growth, and self-understanding. It's all about in-depth numerology. I personally attempt to make numerology accessible and applicable for everyday life matters and do my, de- my best to provide you with grounded information so that you can apply numerology in order to improve your life, to live it from a more conscious, a more balanced place that is aligned with your soul and your true purpose. Now, here are just a few ways you can dive deeper into numerology should you wish to do so. The first and foremost is booking a numerology reading with me. In a numerology reading, you can ask personal questions that are burning in your life that matter to you and get precise, tailored answers, especially for you. You can read more about the types of readings that I offer on my website, and the link is provided in the episode description. Now, if you wish to study numerology on a deeper level, or perhaps even master the method or even pursue it as a career, please check out my numerology study paths. There are two paths. The first one is my self-study numerology course, where you can learn the fundamentals of numerology in a comprehensive way at your own pace, on your mobile device, on your tablet, on your laptop. If you want to take it a step deeper, uh, really master the method, make it your career, you can sign up to my complete path of certification of in-depth numerology studies, where it takes you from a beginner to a numerology professional and get certified as a professional numerologist. Again, to read more about both of these study paths, check out the links in the episode description. So now let's dive into today's topic. The five core numbers are the main building blocks of our numerology chart, but they don't all have the same degree of impact on our lives. In fact, some of them have a huge impact, while others significantly smaller. They are all highly present and important in our life, but not equally influential. You can liken the five core numbers to our human body and its organs. All organs are important and even interconnected. Yet, you cannot live without your heart or brain. But you could probably live without your arm or leg even though it would be extremely uncomfortable and limiting on many levels. So while all organs are important, some have a greater role than others. And the same goes for our five core numbers, my friends. It's important to get a hang of this so that when you interpret your chart or that of others, you don't get scattered or confused or sort of make everything vague and sort of the same, but rather know where to invest your energy and focus 
to glean the most meaningful and accurate information. As I always say, just know a few things really well and you'll be able to glean draw-dropping information about yourself and anyone else. Focus on too many details and you're setting yourself up for a trap. It's like digging many wells one meter deep instead of one well 100 meters deep. Now, if you want to find the living essence, right, the water, so to speak, <clears throat> pardon me, of your own journey, your own soul, or that of any other person, focus on learning the fundamentals really well. I give you my word, you will be a better numerologist than most numerologists out there. So we're about to look at the five core numbers a bit like a Russian doll. I think it's a good image. A doll within a doll within a doll. <clears throat> the biggest one in our case will represent the most all-encompassing or the most influential core number. And so we're starting with first place. The most influential of the five core numbers is your life path number. It truly is the central axis around which all your chart revolves. Without it, the chart has no center, no inherent direction, no true north. It is truly the heart of your chart. And by the way, this is why in my in-depth studies program, when I impart the human body numerology method to my students, we call the life path number the heart number. It gives meaning and direction to every other element in your chart. In fact, when things go awry in your life, it's always a good practice to ask yourself, how well am I living my life path number? Am I giving it enough attention? You always want to come back to it, you see. And if you give any other number in your chart more value or precedence over it, you're up for disappointment and frustration in the long run, my friends. And I see this happening time and time again. It's the hardest when people, I mean, when I say it's the hardest, I mean, it gets the hardest. It, 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 it sort of becomes the hardest when people don't like their life path number. And I've seen this happen. And this particular conflict comes to show a greater level of distancing and disconnection from oneself, a form of non-acceptance or self-denial, if you will and a need to live in self-image rather than truth. Now, it can, of course, also be a result of trauma, right? Behaving this way and, and a difficulty accessing and, you know, and loving your own natural essence. Um, this way or the other, your job is to learn to embody, love, and accept your life path number as your guiding light, anchor, and major destiny in this lifetime. In a way, all the other locations, and I'm talking about right now all the other core locations, are in service of your life path number. It's a bit like the sun around which all the other planets revolve. Let's move on to second place. The second most influential core number is the expression number. Now, some people refer to this number as representative of skills and talents that help us navigate life and express ourselves, therefore expression number. But it's much more than that. What earns it this respectful second place is its role to be the agent of manifestation of your essence and being in this life and the world. Yes, that's a huge role. If your life path 
is the essence, right? Then your expression number is the power that is responsible for its manifestation. Some numerologists call the expression number the destiny number, quote unquote. And while I attribute destiny primarily to the life path number, they are not wrong in their assertion. The expression number has a huge role in manifesting our destiny, in making it real, in leading the way to its flowering. Every car needs a driver. Now, if your car is your life path, it won't be able to do a thing without a driver. Perhaps people in the near future listening to this uh, episode will laugh and say, whoa, this dude was so ancient, like he didn't know about self-driving cars. <laughs> so, but you get my point, right? I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's a bit of a relationship, right? Between the, it's a bit like if, if the car is like, you know, um, represents the essence, it needs still something to drive it to make it move. Um, it's, it's there, the essence is there, the car is there, but it needs the driver. So the expression number shows us the unique way in which we are designed to manifest who we are in the world, in life, in career, and even in our behavior. Having said that, we're ready to look at the third place or the location, the calc, the, the core number that is third in its degree of influence, right? So as we go sort of like down the list, the location has less impact on us, but still all the five core locations are important. So the third most influential core number is your soul urge number. Now this gets more and more interesting because we are already, you know, uh, a third doll in, so to speak, right? And still, all five dolls are important. Now, the third, right, Russian doll, so to speak, is still very important in terms of understanding your deeper self, direction in life, and the bigger decisions you are meant to follow and make. The soul urge is what influences the destination if you uh, adhere to that, you, you stick to that image of the car and the driver. So we have the car, namely the life path. We got the driver, namely the expression number. And now we need to have a clear destination. Even if on the level of essence, namely life path, we know we are meant to live near a lake and we even have a driver right, namely expression number, to drive us to the lake, we have to make a decision about which lake it's going to be. How far from where we are? How big? Is it somewhere in the mountains? Is it in a valley? Will it have trees and nature around it? The soul urge, you see, is where we get specific about the vision of our life and how we want it to unfold. It holds our strongest ideals and pictures of aspiration. In other words, it's the number that decides what we want this destiny to look like. We're adding specific details that deeply matter to us. We are making concrete and conscious decisions about that. So in a way, it's like the navigation device. It helps us see and envision a reality that truly speaks to our heart, which is a life path, and inform our expression number, the driver, how to get there. The driver expression number then will execute its skills to arrive at that particular destination. Another just image you know, that pops to my mind that you can also use as a helpful way to understand this relationship, like this Russian doll relationship, is you start with the foundations of the building, right? Really, like just 
just the, the sheer skeleton of the building. Then let's say you go to the right, the, 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 the second stage, you add piping system, electricity, windows, you know, uh, a tap, sink, a uh, toilet and so on. And then third stage, you really start to decorate the house. You know what I mean? Carpet, color, furniture, right? So it's a bit like every time you go a little bit more into the detail from essence into the detail. Now, those of you who already follow me for a while know that these three core numbers I just mentioned, that the ones we've just covered, namely the life path, the expression number, and the soul urge number, are what I call, and what my teacher calls, the sacred triad. They constitute those quote-unquote body organs you cannot live without. Now, before I move to the fourth place, if you are enjoying this podcast and you want to keep learning more in-depth, grounded, applicable, high-quality numerology, make sure to click the follow or subscribe button on the platform you're listening from, turn on the notification bells if you have one, and become part of my numerology community. That's going to be a great, great joy to have you on board. And also, make sure to check out the comment section. If you have one on the platform you're listening from, you can definitely comment via Spotify and YouTube. Make sure to leave a comment on an episode you liked, share your thoughts, and even ask me questions. It's your opportunity, my friends, to connect with me directly, and I promise you, I will attempt to answer as many comments as I possibly can. So now that I've said that, let us move on to the fourth place. We are already at the fourth Russian doll, almost at the last and the fifth, the innermost. So the fourth most influential core number is a bit of an open debate, I shall say. I will share what was passed down to me from my teacher and perhaps what some other books uh, share as well. But I also want to be very uh, transparent with you and let you know that for me, this is an ongoing research and observation, right? We keep developing numerology and trying to make it more precise, more accurate. So we are talking about the personality number at fourth place. Now, as the name already suggests, we are not talking anymore about the deeper self, but the personality, a more external layer of your being. Nevertheless, this layer is important because its role is to be a portal or a vessel through which the innermost layers of your being are communicated to the world in a context of social interaction or a setting with people you barely know or perhaps even altogether strangers. So it's a bit like a translation device an editing device. Your inner world may hold depths and complexities that are only for you to fully comprehend. And yet, you live in a world with many other people and you somehow need to navigate this world, take part in it, and to some extent, communicate who and what you are to others. The personality number is a bit like an editor that helps you share yourself with others in a way that makes sense for them and for you. When functioning well, it helps you utilize all your inner strengths, represented by the life path, expression, and soul urge numbers. Remember? inner core I was mentioning before. So to utilize all of that and share all of them with the world in a way that makes sense. So 
it filters out the necessary from the unnecessary. Some things you keep to yourself and some things you share with others. When malfunctioning, when the personality number is imbalanced, in other words, you'll see many communication issues and therefore discomfort on the social arena. Ideally, ideally, my friends, you want to reach a place where your personality number is transparent. Transparent enough to communicate your inner being in a way that benefits and makes sense to you and to others. Now, just to briefly explain what I mean by a well-functioning or a malfunctioning personality number, I would just say in short, okay? A well-functioning personality number is usually more congruent with your sacred triad, okay? In, in a sense, it's almost a continuation. It speaks a very similar language, and therefore, it's easy to be used as a vessel of communication. The deeper energies of your being can flow through it like a funnel all the way to the outside world without much distortion or interruption. A malfunctioning or a more imbalanced personality number would be when your personality number is at odds with your sacred triad. Just to give a quick example, if my sacred triad is one, uh, four, and eight, okay, all very masculine, opinionated, focused, hardworking, willful numbers, and my personality number is a two, gentle, tender, considerate, there is, we can call it a bit of a malfunctioning or a bit of a more problematic personality number that can create communication issues. Why? Because I, there's more distortion in passing or like sort of communicating to the outside world, the inner world, right? Depicted by the four, the one and the eight, the sacred triad. Just some food for thought for you guys. Now, let us move into, last but not least, our fifth place in terms of impact. And so the fifth most influential core number, and the one that is in fact part of this open debate I mentioned earlier, uh, an open debate for myself, by the way, is the birthday number. So first, let me explain what it means and then why, for me personally, it's an open debate um, whether it should be moved to fourth place and the personality perhaps uh, moved to fifth place. The birthday number represents gifts that you are given at birth, like unique talents and special abilities. These will serve you in life whenever you need them. A bit like superpowers, if you will, that you can call upon to fulfill certain goals. They are inborn and therefore very spontaneous and natural to you. And so some numerologists place this number in the fifth place because, well, after all, it's only about inborn gifts and talents and less about a bigger role in the scheme of your destiny and its lived expression, right? Like the sacred triad. However, my teacher, Sharon Ron, beloved, talented, so happy to, you know, mention him. And so, so lucky to have studied from him. Always happy to sort of uh, mention that touches my heart. Um, so even though he taught me to see it as a, like as fifth, you know, um, uh, place in order of impact and influence, he also taught me that, um, and I confirmed it, you know, in my own experience, that the, the birthday number gives extra directionality to our life path. It's sort of, it gives an extra coloring. And I've come to see the truth of it over time. But 
also over time, I've, I've, I've come to see that oftentimes it really sticks out more about people. I, I, I sometimes see um, it's as if I see it and feel it more than the personality number. You see? Um, as if it is more essential. Now, so perhaps it's not too defining of one's bigger steps in life. But in my experience, it is fascinating how it is often very palpable and visible about people, as if it's in some way more intrinsic to who they are. So maybe one can argue, you know, that very visible and palpable doesn't necessarily grant a core number more importance. You know, um, I totally, I can totally, you know, uh, subscribe to that argument, and I, you know. So I can agree with that. Uh, as for now, when I teach, right, um, this is the order I teach. Personality number at fourth place, birthday number at fifth place. So this is still where I sort of stand right now. I just wanted to share with you guys, you know, uh, this ongoing exploration I'm having um, and even ask you, what, what, what do you guys think? What is, what is your experience? Again, feel free to comment uh, and let me know so we can have a discussion about that. Now, eventually, let us remember that all five chord numbers work together in unison. In fact, they also bleed into each other, and sometimes it's hard to tell them apart. So remember not to be too rigid in your interpretations. On the other hand, don't be too general and abstract, sort of making them all the same thing, right? Wishy-wash everything or make everything a bit too nebulous because they are not. Um, just like our body, on the one hand, it is one whole. It works in total unison and on a certain level, you cannot really separate, say, the capillaries from the skin, from the muscles, from the bones, etc. Right? And yet, on another level, you can totally separate them and even should. So same goes, you know, for your core numbers. And, you know, you see how this all gets so, you know, subtle and subtler and subtler, right? You have the five core numbers. You have each one of them has a different level of impact. Then, again, they, they even bleed into one another, right? So you can just see how rich numerology gets. Um, by the way, just like uh, as a side note, uh, I'm right now working on another self-study course, which I'm very excited about, that is going to be all about number combinations. How do numbers blend into one another? Just wanted to sort of like drop this here for you guys to know. It's exciting, something to look forward to. Um, so that's that. Now, as I said, um, you know, your, your core numbers work in unison, just like the body. They are merged on many levels. They bleed into each other. And they have their unique functioning and role uh, that should be honored, should be respected, and also addressed properly. Now, knowing the degree of impact and importance of each of the five core numbers can help you greatly in assessing people and also looking for the right information instead of scattering yourself all over the place. And also knowing, you know, what to give more importance, right? I know that I will always look at, you know, the, the, the sacred triad first because I know these have the most impact. I also know if a person is really suffering, I'm going to sort of like lean into the life path, understand how, how is that lived in their life, then expression number, then soul urge, right? And I will know the functioning of each one. I will know how much impact this number has on their person, like their overall personality and character, like their deepest character, the deepest motivations. 
So um, if a person, for example, is interested to explore their practical talents, you know, don't waste your time focusing on all five core numbers, right? Some neurologists do that. And when they want to understand who they really are at the core, don't put too much emphasis on the personality number and so on, right? If somebody wants to know who they really are on the core level, focus more on the life path first and then maybe, you know, expression and soul urge, but mainly life path. If they want to know, you know, something about their intrinsic gifts and talents, you know, maybe talk a little about about the, you know, the birthday number and some of, you know, and, and speak maybe to the skills and unique big capacities of the expression number. So, you know what I mean? You, you want to know what influence the numbers have, what impact they have. Um, and so, you know, the knowledge shared in this episode can help you determine what should be focused on when addressing specific topics of a person's life and also how much emphasis to put on a particular location based on the knowledge you now have of the Russian doll, right? From the most impactful and influential numbers to the least of the five core numbers, right? So, you know, when you address topics, you know, sometimes you're, you know, it's about the brain or the heart coming back to that body example. But sometimes, you know, all you need to focus on is, well, the muscles in your glutes, my friends. So that's sort of what I wanted to say. And, you know, um, as, you know, as, as with every episode, you know, numerology is deep. And as you can see, you know, it's really about coming back to the fundamentals and really understanding them well and just realizing how much depth there is to it. And before we wrap this up, if you are enjoying this podcast, if you want to keep learning in-depth numerology, high-quality numerology, something that really stands out, make sure to click the follow or subscribe button and turn on the notification bells if you have one on the platform you're listening from and become part of my numerology community, my friends. And remember to check out the comment sections and leave a comment on an episode you liked, share your thoughts, even ask me questions. As I've already said, it's your opportunity to connect with me directly and I will attempt to answer as many questions and comments as I can. Also, don't forget to check out my professional numerology readings. It's empowering. It's life-changing. It's spiritually expanding. And of course, to check out my self study numerology course and in-depth numerology certification studies if you want to acquire deeper mastery of numerology. My friends, what a joy it was for me at least to share with you this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, I'll see you in the next episodes. I hope you enjoyed this podcast. If you did, and you want to go deeper into numerology, check out my website, tom-eckert.com. You can also book a numerology reading or even study numerology yourself through my courses. I'll see you in the next episode.